let's have a quick chat now about the fall of the Bastille and the Great Fear, both of which started, took place July 1789. Great Fear continued into August 1789. Both events grew out of fears that the king and his loyal aristocrats were going to crush the National Assembly, that they were going to set back, in, the, I guess, the work that the National Assembly was doing to reshape France and end the Ancien Regime. So let's start looking at the Bastille firstly, and what it was and why it was stormed. So this is an artwork showing what the Bastille probably looked like in Paris before the revolution of 1789. You can see it's essentially a fortress. It was a symbol of royal power right in the heart of Paris. It was built during the Hundred Years War in the 1300s to defend the city. But as a fortress, it was no longer practical. The streets nearby were narrow. It, by the time the revolution took place, really was not a not a functioning fortress at all. It was really an, a prison. It was a place where gunpowder was stored. It was a place where ammunition was stored. Some of the prisoners in the prison, of which there were very, very few, by the way, some of them would actually, we'd now say, were insane. So it was a symbol of royal power, and it had a place in the minds of the public much greater than it actually was. Today, the Bastille is completely gone. And what you're looking at in these two images here is what the Place de la Bastille is now. It's a roundabout with a monument on it in the center of France. In this image on the right, you can see the new what's called Bastille Opera. The Opera of Paris is nearby. So you can't actually see the Bastille on location anymore at all. And we'll talk about its demolition soon. Let's have a quick talk about what happened on July 14th, 1789. Well, certainly the Bastille prison was attacked by a mob of Parisian workers. Certainly they were wanting to defend the National Assembly, who they felt was being threatened by the king. There were rumours that the king was moving troops towards Versailles to crush the National Assembly. These rumours weren't true, by the way. There were troop movements around, but these weren't necessarily to crush the National Assembly. This artwork, much after the event, greatly exaggerates the scene of July 14th, but it's that imagery that really lives on in our public imagination. What was going on? Why were they there? Well, on July 14th, 1789, after they'd taken muzzle-loading muskets from a nearby military base, the Invalides, the Paris mob attacked the Bastille in order to get ammunition and gunpowder. That attack probably looked a little bit more like this image. This image is by one of the eyewitnesses to the event. So quite different. Certainly there are cannons involved. Certainly there's firing and troops involved, but not quite the same image that we have in our public mind. What we do know is that amongst what become later referred to as the winners of the Bastille, there are about a thousand attackers. So it's a crowd the size of about a thousand people, of whom 110% of them were killed by defenders inside the fortress during the attack. You can see the imagery changed over time. This image that I've just made appear on the screen now was created about 100 years after the attack. So we see the images of this attack changing. What we also know is that this victorious mob beheaded the commander, okay, a guy called the Governor de Lournay. They beheaded him, not with a guillotine, so it would have been icky. They put his head on a spike and they paraded it around the city of Paris. They also killed about three, not about, they killed three of his officers. There were only seven prisoners inside the Bastille at the time of the attack, and they were released after the attack. They were what we would now often consider either lunatics or white-collar criminals on the whole. They were forgers. Within the five months after the Bastille, demolition began 
on the Bastille prison. And here is a piece of art that's in the British Museum showing the monument to despotism, dictatorship to the king being pulled down by Paris workers. An interesting question then is, well, where did all the stone go? Well, one thing that happened was very quickly after the revolution, blocks of stone from the Bastille got carved into miniatures, models of the Bastille, and sent out to all the cities of France as a reminder of the event that set France free from the Ancien Regime. The key of the Bastille actually was given as a gift to George Washington, and you can see it in the United States. Parts of the Bastille are actually found in the subway of Paris. Parts of the moat were uncovered when they were digging the subway, and uh, they've left it in place. And there's actually little trackways in some of the railway stations of um, the Paris subway showing where the walls were and where those moat walls were. A lot of the stone was put into a particular bridge across the River Seine in Paris, and that's the bridge there. Some of the walls can be found in gardens across Paris. The stone was recycled and dumped in different locations. And in a few very small villages across Paris, across France, you can actually see monument stones given out one year after the event, 1790. You can see these monument stones carved that were given out to town halls as a memory of this event. So we might leave that there before we talk about the great fear.